This video shows how an XML injection attack exploits source code and can take advantage from it. This is a view of the Sportsoft registration form. The code development of the registration form is broken down into six steps. The first step is to save the user input into a list. This view shows how to add user's information into the list. The second step is to use JAXP in implementation independent manner to create a document object so that we create an XML tree in memory. This view shows how a document is created. The third step is to create an XML element for user. The children element for the user parent would be username, password, user ID, and email. And these children will be appended to the parent this view shows how to create the XML element that represents a user. The fourth step is to create the XML structure using the DOM tree. The root element is called users. For each user object, the function creates a user element and attaches it to the root. Thus the root element contains the list of users. This figure shows how the DOM tree is created. The fifth step is to use Xerces specific classes to print an XML document to a file. The XML serializer class can be used to generate a file output stream and to save the XML into a file. The sixth step is to save the user data in XML format into the database. The execute update method is used to make an insertion into the database. A user, Bob, visits the website and enters his information. A notification indicating a successful submission appears after Bob clicks on the submit button. Bob's information is stored in a database in an XML format. Now Mallory, a hacker, visits the website and intends to inject the XML scripts into the email text field. Again, a successful notification appears after the button submit is clicked. Now we examine the data inserted by the hacker. In this example, a new user, bad user, will be inserted into the table with user ID equals zero. In many cases with XML applications, the second user ID instance will override the first. This results in the injected new user, bad user, being logged in with user ID equals zero, which is often used as administrator user ID. Now, how do we reverse engineer the XML injection attack? First, we look at the misuse case view of the online registration website. The view presents extensions and exceptions to the main success scenario, which are potential attack vectors. From this view, we can see what developers intended users to do and what hackers can actually do with the system. When accessing the online registration website, a regular user intends only to fill in the form and register for the tournament. A hacker also intends to register for the tournament, the only difference being that the attacker wants to register multiple players and pays only for one player fee, and this activity is indicated by these red lines. This might happen when the software developer counts only the total number of XML files in the database system. Now, we explore the process view. This view contains additional information about the flow of control during the interaction and can show specific locations within a sequence of method calls where the system can be exploited. In a case of a regular user accessing the website, a program execution starts when the user accesses the URL of the online registration website. The system then calls main.java that displays a GUI to the user. The system then saves the user's input in the user object. By using the document builder, the system creates a new document. This document is then used to create an XML file using XML serializer. This is the exact location where the vulnerability occurs. There's nothing wrong with the XML serializer method. However, the problem is that the XML document is serialized without further checking of the structure and the format. With this implementation, a hacker can inject an XML script which further contains multiple XML data in one submission to the system instead of just one.